I teach in the School of Theology at Perkins at SMU, and I also teach in the Graduate Program of Religious Studies. So I don't teach undergraduates, which in fact I, I used to even miss. So why is it important uh, in this arena? Um, several reasons. One is because philosophy of religion deals with what I consider to be intrinsically important questions for theology. <laughs> so not just for general religion, but for theology. And if you look at any of the standard textbooks, which uh, you know, we can improve on, even on the one that I may have written, <laughs> um, if you look at the standard textbooks, they include invariably, for example, treatments of divine revelation, and they include treatments of miracle, and they include treatments of life after death. Now, those are just um, extremely important topics within theology. And I think that theology will be impoverished if it doesn't have access to that canon of material. So uh, to begin with, I think that students should be exposed to philosophy of religion because of the intrinsic importance of the themes and topics that are picked up. Now, at a second level, I think philosophy of religion is crucial for theology because I don't see how you can get a hold of the presuppositions that play within theology if you don't have a, a sort of skills in philosophy. Um, I mean, you can almost take any area, whether it be biblical studies or whether it be the history of doctrine, and they're just crucial sort of philosophical commitments that, that show up within this work. <clears throat> and if, if, you're, if you don't develop an eye, a philosophical eye, you won't see them. I mean, the classic case, for example, is in New Testament studies, a long time ago now, uh, in, say, Boltman's treatment of the resurrection, uh, when he says, for example, you can't believe in electric light bulbs and believe in miracles. Well, behind that is a very sophisticated uh, account of the relationship between science and theology, and if you don't know that to be it, you won't even get what's going on. Now, I would press it further, um, because I have acute interest in the history of philosophy and the history of theology. I really don't think you can read the history of theology in an illuminating way, <laughs> a fully illuminating way, without knowing the interaction between theology and philosophy down through the ages. And I mean, I think that history is very complicated and requires a lot of uh, nuanced sort of reading of the texts. But obviously, in the early period, the relationship with Platonism, with Neoplatonism is crucial, uh, Aquinas, You've got to know what's happening in the background music in Aristotle. And I'm working right now in, on divine action in the Eucharist in Aquinas. And most people just simply think he's deploying a sort of purely Aristotelian, say, metaphysics. But it's very obvious that he's beginning there, but not necessarily finishing there. And if you don't know the history there, you're going to be in deep trouble. And my third example, which uh, is dear to my heart, if, if, if you look at debates about canon, and the very meaning of the term canon, uh, as it develops in the early church, I think as it begins to shift and change in the medieval and reform period, uh, you won't get it if you don't have some philosophical training to perceive what's going on in, 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 the, in, in the material before you. So I, I'm, I think theology is a difficult topic, a subject, because it I think you have to be immersed in, in the history of doctrine. And to do that well, I think you need the, uh, the history of philosophy. Now, the last terrain that, that I would uh, just highlight for its importance as I see it, uh, theologians can't avoid questions of justification. <laughs> you know, why do you believe this proposal over against that proposal? Or why do you go with the Christian tradition over against, say, the Jewish or Islamic tradition? Uh, and what are you going to do with the um, very interesting and sometimes very aggressive objections that are made against theology? Yeah. Questions about do we have knowledge? Do we have uh, especially good warrants? Can we justify our theological claims? Are just inescapable. And they show up in, in the past in what's called the prolegomena to systematic theology. Now, there I think the work in philosophy is utterly indispensable. Because theology is a distinctive subject matter, and it therefore requires special attention as to whether there's a general epistemology you can deploy here, 
or whether given the subject matter, there are distinctive considerations, say about divine revelation or testimony or whatever, or religious experience, that are relevant to that. And so I, my own view is that uh, given that theologians can't avoid that and, and don't want to avoid it, I think the better ones, uh, then you're in the thick of philosophy. And in particular, you're in the thick of epistemological debate. So for, for those, I think, basically three reasons. One is the intrinsic importance of the themes that are picked up. Secondly, for understanding both contemporary and, his, and historical theological claims and the presuppositions that come to play within them. And thirdly, because of the uh, just uh, inescapable questions about justification, I don't think you can do sort of deep and penetrating theology without formation within philosophy.